So in this question, we've got a cubic expression and we're asked to show that x minus 1 is a factor of that. And we're going to use synthetic division, the synthetic division method to, to show that. So we'll be dividing x minus 1 into this and show that there's a remainder of 0. One example before we go ahead with that, suppose we were dividing 2 into 7. It goes 3 times, 2 3s are 6, plus a remainder of 1. What we've discovered about 7 is that it's 2 times 3 plus 1. If we, for instance, divided 2 into 8, it would go 4 times, 4 2s are 8, with remainder 0. And we'll have discovered that 8 is 2 times 4 plus 0. In other words, 2 is a factor of 8 because uh, the remainder the remainder is 0. So let's do this with this cubic expression, this linear factor x minus 1. So we set up a division. For x minus 1 we use the number 1. If it was x plus 1 we'd use a negative 1. We set up the division framework and instead of writing this down we use the coefficients. That's the numbers in front of each of the terms. So there are two lots of x cubed. So a 2 goes down. There's negative 5 lots of the x squared. So that's negative 5 for the coefficient. The coefficient of x is 1. It's plus 1x. And then the constant at the end is 2. So that's the division set up. So let's do the procedure. Bring down the 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Add these two numbers. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add these two numbers. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add these two numbers. Now, as is the case where, for instance, we're dividing 2 into 8 is 4, what does this tell us about 8? So what does this tell us about the cubic expression 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus x plus 2. What does this tell us about 8? It tells us that 8 is 2 times 4. This tells us that this cubic expression is x minus 1 times 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. Remember the power goes down 1. Plus 0, remainder 0, there's the remainder here, plus 0. And we'd say specifically, since the remainder is 0, then x minus 1 is a factor. Just in the same way as we divided 8 by 2, it goes 4 times, a remainder 0, so 2 was a factor of 8. So x minus 1 into this cubic expression goes this number of times with remainder 0. So x minus 1 is a factor since the remainder is 0. So that's the part A. Let's look at part B. Hence or otherwise solve f of x equals 0. So, we've reached a stage now where we know that this f of x, this cubic expression, we can write in factorised form as x minus 1 times 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. So, we're asked to solve this equation, and it may well be possible that this quadratic expression can be factorised further. I suppose in, in this case of 8 being 2 times 4, this 4 can be factorised further. It can be written as 2 times 2. So let's check that. The first terms would have to be 2x times x, and then a 2 
only two possibilities, one times two or two times one. And I think you'll find that one and two there works when we get a minus 4x plus a 1x. So we now have a further two factors. You always check this by doing the first outsides, insides, last to see that the multiplication does give you 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. It's always safe to multiply back and find out that your factorization has been successful. So we've got three things multiplied together to get an answer of zero. So somewhere lurking in there, there must be a zero factor. So either x minus 1 is equal to zero, or 2x plus 1 equals zero, or x minus 2 equals zero. One of these terms must be zero. If x minus 1 was zero, x would be equal to 1. If 2x plus 1 is zero, that would mean 2x was negative 1, in which case x would have to be negative a half. Or, in this case, x would be equal to 2. So these are the three solutions of that equation f of x equals 0. Three solutions.